So I haven't covered this machine on the channel in a while. This is my 2010 Mac Pro. I use it as my server. If you're new here, the specs are a, I think a four core, 2.8 gigahertz Xeon. It has eight or 16 gigs of RAM. I think it's 16 right now. And then I have a 500 gig laptop drive as the boot drive, two four terabyte drives in RAID 0 and an eight terabyte acting as a time machine backup. So this is mainly a file server. I also have it set up as a time machine backup destination. I have a couple Minecraft servers going on this, but that's kind of beside the point. There's a lot of issues with those. And I have occasionally hosted websites on this, but I don't have one up right now. So it's off the setup and it's on my kind of test station here and that's not good. So for the past couple of weeks, this machine just has not been on the network. I've restarted it a couple times. Uh, by that, I just mean I hold down the power button until it restarts. I have it plugged into the KVM where my gaming computer is, but for some reason before it dropped off the network, I used to be able to screen share with it, but the KVM output didn't work. Nothing on the KVM side worked. And I still don't know what the problem is with that because it's just a DVI connection, but I guess we'll have to figure that out some other time. Usually I don't have a monitor plugged into this, like I said, so I can't even tell if it's booting into an operating system. I guess the most logical thing to presume is that the hard drive died because it was a backup drive from like 2006 that I took out of the enclosure and threw in here. And that's been going nonstop since like July 2018, so it's been a good 18 months or so since I did that. So to replace it, I have a Kingston SSD, and even if the drive's not dead, I'm going to be either cloning it or doing a fresh install on this drive just because I want to have a bit more reliability and stuff. Because like I said, it is an old laptop drive and this is basically a brand new SSD. I got it about a year ago, but I haven't used it for anything. So with all that said, I'm going to go ahead and start it up here. You can hear all the drives spin up. Power chime and we have a display output and it is booting into something. We can see this comes up, you can ignore the keyboard. I have this using an ethernet team, like a link aggregation to my smart switch I unboxed a couple videos back because configuring lag is something I don't really know a lot about because on one of my switches, admin mode disabled enables it and admin mode enabled enables it on my other switch and it's kind of all over the place. But you can see we have master bond here and that's configured with a static IP and it should come up because I have one interface plugged in. And I might go and get a couple long ethernet cables I have laying around and see if that does anything, if both of them have to be plugged into the ports on that switch for that to work. I guess for now we could just add an interface. There's our Minecraft server coming up and see that crashes, that's another issue. It might honestly be time to reload this completely, but I'm not really sure if that's worth it right now because I have my uh, Intel Symantec server that I'm working on. Hopefully that's going to be up in the next six months, year or so, because it's getting old and I kind of want to start using it for stuff, but I don't have a solid connection and there's just kind of a lot of issues I have to like kind of flake out with everything. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in this SSD and clone it. I should mention I have a USB 3 card in here. That's the one I added to my Mac Pro workstation a few years ago when I still use that. Since then I've decommissioned that computer and I, and I think I talk about that in one of my 2018 MacBook Pro videos from last year, last time around I got a new MacBook Pro. Another thing is none of these PCIe cards are held in with that retention bracket. They just kind of sit in there and that's really sketchy and I might take the bracket out of my other Mac Pro and also throw in some PCI cards in there and also throw in some PCI brackets in there but I might take the bracket out of my other Mac Pro and also throw in some covers into there and before anyone comments that my video card not being fully seated is the problem with the KVM I'm getting a display output there so I'm you know I should be getting one with the KVM too so this drive adapter here I'm zoomed in quite a lot, so I have to hold that really weird. Just flips onto the SSD, SATA to USB 3. And I'm going to pop the side panel on this. And I am going to hold in that card while I connect to the SSD. 
and there is an orange light on that, and it should mount. The disk you inserted was not readable by this computer. That's good. That's supposed to happen because I have uh, VM stuff on there from a different video that I'm not sure if it's going to be out by the time I release this. So I'm going to start cloning the drive. I might screen record that or at least uh, run through the process of me setting that operation up because I'm going to be using the uh, dd command in the terminal to do that. So these are all the volumes in the server. We have our external drive thing that I shucked, I think is the word for it. We have our two WD 4 terabyte reds. Those are in RAID 0. And then we have our 8 terabyte Seagate. Master pool is the combined RAID set. And then backup disk is the volume for that. You guys know how disk utility works. And ASMT media is the small SSD that I have plugged in. So I'm just gonna erase that. I'm gonna call it boot SSD. And then the next thing we wanna do is go into the terminal and clone the drives. So to find the drives, we type in disk util list, and that shows all of the drives. And I guess I could make this bigger here. And then dd if equals the slash dev slash let's see which one is my 500 gig dev slash disk three and if is the source and then of equals dev slash slash dev slash disk five and of is the destination. So dd if equals slash dev slash disk three, dev disk three is the 500 gig, and dev disk five is the 120 gig SSD. And I think we can just hit the enter button, permission denied, I have to have sudo in front of it, that's right. Sudo, rather. And resource busy, I have to unmount that, don't I? Disk util unmount disk dev disk five. All right, and then I do that. And I think there is a flag you can actually put that shows the status. And if I can find how to do that, I'll probably just cancel this command. So it looks like if I hit control T, it just kind of refreshes the status here. And that's what I'm going to use to check the progress on this. It's not going to be automatic, but it's going to be something. So I think with that said, I'm just going to let this run and then I'll continue the video when something happens. So here is the old Mac Pro and I only have a couple RAM modules in it because I've basically torn everything out of this machine. Kind of sad because this was my main computer, but... Sadly, the system, like a lot of the time, wouldn't boot and everything, and made a couple videos on that. So we have two cards here, or two uh, brackets, or whatever these are called, blank things, and we have our retention arm. And I'm just going to throw the side panel back onto this. And I have a third one of those uh, slot blank things somewhere and actually I just reach into that bin there that's not for a Mac Pro so I'll find something else but I think I have one just like somewhere around here so I'll have to figure out where those are so this is the uh, current situation here and I should actually get a screwdriver because this thumb screw is like impossible to get out but everything's just kind of hanging in there and this card actually doesn't properly fit and it didn't do that in the other Mac Pro either. I only ended up finding the two, but I'll find a third one at some point, like I said. But the bracket seems to go on, actually maybe not. It's kind of finicky, especially with that card. I said in the last clip that those cards don't really fit properly and that is certainly the case here but I'm gonna go ahead and get that bracket on because I can't do this one-handed. So the transfer is going pretty well. Let me hit uh, that button again. And I 
finished mounting all of this and this uh, USB card still flops around, but at least there's nothing up letting it really like pull out. You know, it's just kind of sitting in the slot. So I guess it's time for a uh, little rant here. So this is my Mac Pro and it just kind of sits under my desk running 24 seven and it's my file server, but I don't really transfer a lot of data to it. The only kind of thing I really put on it is my YouTube footage. And obviously in the past year or so, my channel has not been active or nearly active enough to warrant having like a setup like this as my file server. It only connects with dual gig interfaces. There's no 10 gig card in here or anything that would require a lot of processing power. And it doesn't have any onboard graphics, so I have to have a old inefficient graphics card in there. That's a GT120. And obviously it's not taking like 500 watts to run, but it's just kind of sitting there really doing nothing because I don't have a display attached to this. And it's only there because I think you need that for headless support anyway. And I have a quad core Mac mini sitting downstairs. It's one of the 2012 Mac mini servers and it has onboard USB 3. I think it has like four or five USB 3 ports, integrated graphics, dual hard drive slots, and I think 16 gigs of RAM or my 2012 MacBook Pro might have a 16 gig kit in it. Actually, I have two 16 gig DDR3 kits now, so that's irrelevant anyway. The only kind of issue is expansion on the drive side and Amazon sells these $22 uh, drive enclosures. They just have a USB 3 and 12 volt input. They're rebranded Orico things, but they're Amazon Basics, so I'm going to guess that Amazon gets the cherry picked good ones compared to. I've had pretty bad luck with Orico equipment just kind of failing because it's really cheap. But I might end up picking up a few of these and throwing the drives in there and moving everything to the Mac Mini, but I'm not really sure if 60 bucks right now is in the budget. And I do have a spot for that on the top of my desk. It would look nice just kind of sitting there on my desk. But I also have, I could also get something like, actually that was not really what I was looking for, but I could get like a RAID enclosure or something, an external JBOD enclosure of some sort. I think all of the cheap ones have a switch on the back that's either JBOD or RAID 1, 0, 5, or 6, or 10, or whatever, but it only lets you use the onboard RAID or configure the drives all as one thing. It's not a pass-through, it's a JBOD, so it's not really going to work out. But that's only going to be temporary because, like I said, I have that Symantec server that I'm going to start working on. And my dad and I are going to run some conduit from my basement to my bedroom or my office here. And once that's good, then I'll be able to have like multiple 10 gig connections to the server rack. And all of this stuff will kind of just be ruled out because that server is gonna take care of everything. And I have other videos on that. I'm not gonna go into it in this video, but yeah, I guess I just have to wait for this to finish and I'm not really sure what's kind of going on with the whole not showing up on the network. It isn't getting the IP address or whatever. So it's not getting like a link up and Actually, I'm saving stuff from iCloud right now, and that explains why that's not working at all, because there's no internet for this machine. But I'm going to figure that out off camera. I'm probably going to swap around some Ethernet cables and see if I can get the uh, link to go back up if I have multiple connections. Uh, but until then, I guess we'll just have to wait. So I guess I have to have both Nick's plugged in for this to come up. I thought it was configured to do failover as well, but I guess not. So I have one cable going up there and then that goes to my router and then I have this cable going there to my switch. And um, actually that, that also goes to the switch right now, but it's usually plugged into the router to bring networking to that switch back there for the test setup. And it's, it has an IP, 
uh, if I go into a new terminal window here and we ping, I don't know, let's ping Google. Yeah, see, this is weird. No root to host. If we ping my network switch, we don't get a connection either. It's very weird. Don't know what's going on. But I'm gonna guess it's configuration. It's a configuration issue on the switch. That would be my guess because it was configured like admin mode disable, and that worked for a while, and it's not working anymore. So don't really know what's going on. But if we go to my switch, and log in here, if we go to lag, you can see we have our thing in admin mode, enable. Now, if we do that again, you can see we get something. So that would explain why this wasn't working before. And it should be working now because we're getting a reply from our switch. But that was set at disable and that's been working since, since I got the switch and it's been working since I had my GS748 up here. And that was like, it's been like six months of that setup. So I don't know what's going on. It's weird, but I swear to God, admin mode thing switches back and forth which one works so it looks like we have a uh, connection here i'm gonna ping google and and we get a reply from google as well so i don't know what's going on but at least that's working if we kind of continue our thing here we're getting a transfer and I'm not sure how long this is gonna take I'm just gonna let it go till it finishes I have other stuff I can do today and I guess I'll continue the video once this is done so sorry for the bad lighting it's like 3 in the morning and I can't sleep so I figured what better time than to swap the hard drives than right now I also have work in you know a few hours give or take so that's great. But if I pop the latch on the Mac Pro and pull the drive out, uh, there it is. We put this in here on, I think July 14th, 2018 is when I recorded that video. And I think I released that the same day as well. I'm not really sure though. It's been a while. So I'm gonna adjust the camera and grab my screwdriver. I think the drive clone operation finished successfully. Didn't give me any errors and it did finish. So I think I'll unscrew these front screws first. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna use that drive for. Probably nothing right now, especially given that it's old and has like a couple of years worth of runtime on it now. It's just not really worth deploying in anything. And I think it's 500 gig. So, I mean, I could put it in something eventually because it's a pretty good size, but it's just not really, like I said, worth kind of worrying about. And I am kind of torquing that screw in there because it's at a weird angle. I guess I'll fix that at some point, maybe off camera, but I don't really want to interrupt the shot or make it take any longer than it already is. So I fixed that screw. It was just the, the SSD was kind of shifted in the adapter. So I'll pop that in the front bed here. And that didn't work at all. I don't think I damaged the motherboard when that fell, but whatever. The drive sleds I have in here, I think are three, three, four, and two. So everything's out of order. It's been nearly five years since I got the first one of these. It's been like, I think three years since I got this one. It's pretty dusty on the inside too. You can see that's there. I'll clean that eventually. It's pretty cold outside. I'll probably clean it once spring comes around. It's been going fine. I haven't cleaned it since 
really since the video where I put the this drive in it. So it'll be fine for a couple more months, I think. So I'm gonna rearrange the monitor and keyboard and mouse so we can get a better view of what's going on. Can't really move the monitor farther than that because my power cable isn't long enough, but I'm gonna hit the power button and we can see what happens. And we're booting into something. That loud drive ticking you just heard, I actually thought that was the old hard drive. But I guess, I'm gonna guess it's the eight terabyte that's in the top in the optical drive bays because that actually doesn't mount in the Mac Pro drive sleds. So I had to throw it up there. It's been almost two years since that video, I think. I'll link all of the server videos I mentioned in the description in case you're interested. I don't think this is supposed to happen. Don't really know where to go from here. I guess I could try like Carbon Copy Cloner, which does work for cloning boot drives. I guess DD doesn't work for that with this for some reason, not really sure what's going on. But I think tomorrow, or I guess today, later on, I am gonna throw the hard drive back in here and use Carbon Copy to clone the data again. And hopefully that works, because I do want to have an SSD in here. The hard drive has been going fine for a while, but I don't really want to have the hassle of that dying before I get my new server going, because that's just kind of a pain to set up the services and all that stuff again. So I guess I'll continue the video tomorrow. I am very tired, even though I can't sleep. I am very tired, so I think I'm just going to, like I said, continue later on. So it's the next day, and I am trying to get Carbon Copy Cloner installed, but hitting enter just highlights the text or something. Um, this computer has been giving me like all kinds of issues like that, and it goes back to what I say about any Mac that's like 2012 or older just seems to kind of bug out at this point. It's really weird. Don't know what's up, but. Um, I'm gonna have to like sneaker net carbon copy cloner onto here. So that's great. So I just uh, copied it over to this Ubuntu install disk just for now. And I am gonna eject that, pull out my dongle here and carry this over. And we can pop that into our USB card up here, which by the way, this bracket here could not care less that it's being held in. So I'm gonna have to figure out something better. Maybe I'll drill out the bracket on that card, but I don't know. So if we go to the drive, which isn't showing up on the, oh wow, it's just not showing up in the computer at all. That's great. Glad to see that's the thing. It's an Ubuntu disk, so it might just need formatting, but showed up on my MacBook. So, I don't know, I'll have to figure that out. All right, let's uh, try that again. I'm actually gonna pull up uh, disk utility here and see if it even mounts on the computer. This is just another one of those situations where it just nothing ever really works the way it's supposed to whenever I do anything like this. So the computer is not mounting that drive. It's mounting the SSD just fine. Other Mac is mounting that drive just fine. Let me try a different port. There we go. That's obnoxious. So it's just open carbon copy cloner. I already erased the SSD off camera. So here we go. I'm just gonna kind of ignore the tips here and select my boot drive, my external drive and don't need to schedule that. So it is beginning the clone here. And I might buy a license for this actually. That's actually going really fast. Or wait, it's just archiving. Never mind. So I might buy a license for this and just have the master pool get cloned to the backup disk instead of using Time Machine. Because I've never had a drive failure. And I think with Time Machine, I can just restore off the Time Machine backup. But 
I think Carbon Copy Cloner would have a more kind of streamlined operation with that because it would just be copying the volume, not adding stuff and, you know, making it into a backup. Not to mention if one of the drives in the RAID dies, I can just either clone the data back to it or use the eight terabyte as the shared destination. So I'm gonna think about that. If it's like 50 bucks, I probably won't do it, but if it's like 25, then I'll just bite the bullet and finally get a license for this. So the clone completed and there is also a recovery partition on there now. So we can turn this off and I already showed the footage of me installing the SSD the first time around this morning. So I'm not gonna do it again. So I'll just continue the video when I have everything installed. The SSD is back in now. So if I hit the power button and no Apple logo yet, that's kind of concerning. Oh, here we go. And it's going a lot faster off that SSD. And if this works, then we can just throw the computer back on the setup, connect it to the proper cables and here we go, everything is fine. So I just wanna make sure my services and everything start up properly. I'm gonna put my SSD up at the top there and clean up the view. And backup disk should be a time machine disk, but whatever, I'll figure that out later. Our server comes up, even though I don't have that actually running, I'm just gonna hit stop and yeah, so it seems like everything's back to normal now. The time machine backup did actually come up the way it was supposed to. So that's good. And I guess at this point we can just throw this back on the setup. Feeling when you need to upload your resume, but it's on your server and your server is not showing up on the network. So the Mac Pro is back on the uh, test bench here and I plugged it back in and wouldn't come up on the network. So I think I'm gonna have to get rid of the uh, link aggregation. Let's see what our uh, config looks like. So master bond, obviously that's not gonna work because the ethernet isn't plugged in. And Minecraft crashes because there's no internet connection. So get rid of master bond. And let's add both of our Ethernet's back. And I think that's all we need to do. And then we can shut it down and put everything back on the setup. The switch is also configured not to have a link aggregation. So, so it looks like uh, everything is good. We have the server on the network and I'm gonna have to configure Time Machine again because I was backing up to the four terabyte drive that Seagate sent me. Yeah, I'll figure that out anyway. It's been like a month since this backed up properly. So that's why I'm backing up to the external because it's just, uh, I wanna have backups of this computer. Obviously that's kind of important. So. so the Mac Pro has been working fine for about the past week. I think that's when I recorded the last clip, but it's back up here again because I purchased this. This is a Solar Flare dual 10 gig uh, network interface card. And uh, the reason I went with Solar Flare versus Intel or Mellanox is because this is the only one that is sort of compatible with Mac OS. Another issue is the drivers for this are 10.9 and we're on like 10.15. I think this server is running 10.12. I bought this because for now I am getting a router with a 10 gig network interface and I'll make a video about that when the NDA releases, I guess. And after that, this is gonna help with transferring data to the big server that I'm gonna get deployed and running, hopefully pretty soon, because my dad and I are working on a conduit project and everything. So if we take a look inside the Mac Pro, we have a few uh, empty slots here. We have one at the top and one between the two. Uh, cards there and you actually can't see that that's kind of a bad camera angle but my tripod doesn't go any lower so I think this is actually kind of sketchy because this card doesn't allow this bracket to be screwed in and I think I'm actually going to take this card out and modify it 
before I put in the solar flare card. And I'll just do that right now quickly. I just need to make the PCI kind of screw cover whole thing bigger. And uh, once that's done, it'll just seat nicely. And I think I am gonna put the solar flare card below this one. So I have the bracket clamped in the vise here, and I'm gonna use this file to uh, clean it, or to uh, widen the hole. And the card's over there just because why would I do this with the card attached? And hopefully this works. I think this is the area where the Mac Pro screw attaches. I don't think it's this part where that little notch is, and I'm way too close there. But uh, I'm gonna widen that out a bit, and hopefully it sits better that way. So I have it opened up a bit more, and I realized that the issue might be that it doesn't seat down far enough, and this kind of pokes up above the uh, bracket in the Mac Pro. I'm going to have to actually take a look at it, because I kind of, like I said, forgot which dimension is kind of off. These little pegs here that fit in the holes for the thing, and that one now fits kind of, so I guess it's good enough. Um... Yeah, so the card is going to go into this slot here, this other X16 or by 16 I think it's a by 8 card, so it kind of works, but, you know, whatever. So I'm going to move this thing that I just took out, the bracket that I just took out, to the top. And hopefully this all doesn't just, like, collapse while I'm installing everything because there's a lot of just like free hanging stuff in here right now but we can just pop our 10 gig card into there and make sure these brackets are seated and the card fits so you just gotta wrestle this bracket on and the solar flare card is seated nicely the USB card still kind of flops around, but the top bracket and this bottom bracket, bottom bracket's loose, but that's not coming out. So I think we're good now. This computer definitely needs a clean, and I'll probably do that at some point soon. But it is pouring rain today, so I don't really want to take this outside. So I'm gonna pop the side panel back on, and plug it in and we can see if the card is detected. So first boot with the new card. Nothing's on fire yet. So let's go to uh, system preferences and network and add. And we do not have any um, other interfaces showing up. So I'm going to go to my pools, and I think it's this one, and then solar flare drivers, and then let's try the 10.9 driver. By the way, I installed or I downloaded the driver twice. That's why you see two driver files, just in case one got corrupted because the package was signed with an invalid certificate. This package might not install what you expect. Do you want to continue with the installation anyway? Yeah, sure, that's fine. So everything seems to be working so far. The installation was successful, awesome. So I doubt my card is gonna show up right away. I'm probably gonna have to restart. Oh no, there you go. So you can see, that's actually um, kind of small, but PCI Ethernet something slot, uh, PCI Ethernet slot two, port one and two. That's really cool. So my Mac Pro officially has 10 gig networking. So the intro clip ran a little long, so I'm gonna redo it. You can see everything shows up here, everything's working fine. Backups are also working if I pull that up here. So uh, it actually doesn't say where I'm backing up to, but I am backing up to the server. So that's great. And I've uh, decommissioned that drive for now just because, you know, I don't need it. And 
I don't really think there's anything else to say. Uh, like I said earlier, the router, I should have that in maybe a month or so. That's going to be pretty cool. And then the conduit project is actually picking up a little bit because my dad and I actually went to the Home Depot to look at parts the other day. So that's kind of like the starting point. And we're basically ready to do it as soon as we both have free time. He works a lot. I am starting school tomorrow, actually. So that's great. But uh, with that said, I think that's going to be it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.